Hello everyone. In this video, we, we are going to start building an amazing application that I call it Baroque. Baroque uh, is going to be an, is an application that will show you one of the greatest Baroque musicians that ever lived. There are a few, but these are the ones that I I have chosen. So we have Bach or Bach, and we have Handel and Vivaldi. I know that my German friends will probably not like my pronunciation of Bach or Bach. But anyway, so you get the idea. So this is the app we're going to be building. So essentially, you click on Bach. You see there we have his picture. There is his name. He was born in Germany. And we have his little bio here text. And notice also we have a nav bar, which when you click back, it takes you back to main menu. We can do the same to handle. And we have his picture, his information, his bio. We can go back. And Vivaldi, same deal. All right, so this is the application we're going to be building. I'm very excited because we're going to be incorporating a lot of things that we have learned. And as always, we're going to be learning something new. All right, let's go ahead and start building the app. I've already, I went ahead and created the app called Baroque App. As you can see here, we have our Baroque App project. So I'd like you to go ahead and create this project yourself. So name it Baroque App. So I'm going to go ahead and open our main storyboard. I'm going to close this view there. Perfect. Let's make this... Uh, smaller that way we can actually be more manageable so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of the assets all of the images that we need for this application so I already have everything set up of course so I'm gonna go ahead and get a few images there so the first one is gonna be these red oval images and then I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, a few other images here all right there we go. So we have the images that we need. Of course, you will have access to all of these images, all of these assets that we're using here. All right, great. So we have that out of the way. Now let's go back to our main storyboard. So we have our main storyboard. We're going to go ahead and start putting together the user interface. So click on our storyboard here and then go to editor, go to embed and say here navigation controller. You've seen this before, so now we have our navigation controller. And right away, you see in our view controller here, we have our navigation bar. Perfect. Let's go ahead and run this. So, okay, there it is. We have our application. That doesn't have anything, but at least we see we have our nav bar. So we know that our navigation controller is indeed working. The next thing we need is another view controller because remember, we because remember, this application will consist of two view controllers or two screens. All right, so we have view control here at the bottom. If you don't see it, you can go ahead and just search for view controller and go like this and let go. Perfect. And let's go ahead and make it 4.7 again, smaller size. Let's go ahead and uh, move it there. Okay, good. Okay, just to test things out, let's go ahead and put a, a random button here. There's our button. Let's put in our first one. Okay, let's go uh, connect it. So say control and drag to the second one. Let go. Action segue. Just say show. Perfect. You can see now we have our segue there. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and give it a run. There we go. We have our app. Perfect. So if you click this button, we should be able to get to our second view controller. And conveniently, we have our back as part of our navigation controller. Perfect. That's good. Okay. So now let's go ahead and delete this. So I'm going to, so what do you do? Right click and click on this X, which will then get rid of the connection. And that's very important because if you just went ahead and deleted the button, you would still have, you would end up getting some errors because the connection would still be there. So it's always a good idea to double click and check to make sure that no connections are there before you delete the button. So, and delete. Now we have our clean slate back. Good. We are going to put a title here. So if you click at the top of our first view here, on main storyboard, you see at the top here, our inspector, it says title. So we can go ahead and say Baroque. Okay, that's our title. And there you have it. Our title says Baroque. Now let's go ahead and put our buttons here on our first screen. So go ahead again, there's button here. Drag and drop right about there. That works. 
And right away to our right, our to our attribute inspector, we're gonna go ahead and change a few things here. We're gonna go ahead and give a background. So when I go at uh, the background here, click back down that, click that drop, drop down button, go to red. There we go, red oval, and there we go, we have our button. But as you can see, that doesn't look really good. So what we can do, let's just adjust things a little bit here. Just drag, and that's for fine. Okay, okay, let's save this and run and see how things are looking. All right, that looks very decent, okay? And while we're here, let's go ahead and change our simulator to something else. To instead of 6S+, plus, let's change to just 6. That way, it's uh, more manageable. And there we go. Beautiful. As you can see, our button is there. Perfect. Of course, we don't want it to say button. We want it to say, first one, we're going to call this Bach. So click on that and say Bach. And while we are still here, let's go ahead and change a few attributes to our button here. The first thing we need to do, let's go ahead and change our font. Let's go to custom. And let's find something. How about, how about this Hoffler text here? That looks great. I like that. Let's make it a little bigger, perhaps. That's good. And make it bold, black bold. There we go. Ooh, that's very nice. Perfect. Let's go ahead and command copy and command V. So we have a few of those. It's fine. And there it is. So we got three now. So the second one we're going to call handle the last one Vivalde perfect all right so let's save this running one more time just to see how things are looking on an actual simulator there we go very cool very nice I like that all right good so things are going smoothly here we have our buttons we have everything set up now let's go ahead and connect our buttons to our next second view controller which is the second one to the right here. so click on our buck and control, drag and drop, action, show. That's fine, segue. And right away, you notice we have our segue there indicated uh, with this error here. Perfect. Now, let's go click on that and let's identify, give it a name so that we can use in code later. So this segue here, we're going to call Bach seg. Just like that. Enter. Perfect. Let's do the same with handle. So control. There we go. Show. All right, so let's do the same. This is one. This one is going to be handle seg, enter, and finally let's do the same with Vivaldi and show. Click on that one. That's a handle. There we go. This one is Vivaldi. Perfect and enter. All right, so now we have our segways connected. Again, let's go ahead and give it a quick run here to make sure things are still doing great. Click on Bach, takes up the second screen, and this should do the same as well as Vivaldi. Perfect, things are good. Now we are ready to put together the user interface for our second view controller here. And what we need, we need an image view here. So let's go and find an image view. So let's search here, image view, there it is. Drag and drop, that's perfect. Make it a little bit smaller and maybe there's that's good and while we have that selected let's go and change a few things here let's change the mode to aspect fit and just to make sure things are looking great let's put an actual image here so at the top where it said image view let's go to image so drop down let's put handle there okay as you can see it's looking good that's always a good idea when we have image views um, put some sort of image that way we can actually see how um, everything looks with an actual image. Of course, we will be handling this dynamically in our application. For now, we at least see where things are going to be placed. All right, so now we need to put a few labels here to the right. So let's go find a label. There it is. All right, there we go. So right about there, make this long. This is going to be the name let's copy this and paste a few times so country and the last one's gonna be year so we have those nice put another label here so let's go ahead and just say V command V because we have that one there and this one here call this bio 
Let's make it a little bit uh, different, bolder. Why, how about that? And while we're here, let's give it a little bit of a color to differentiate. That's good, nice color. So there we go, bio. At the bottom here, it's gonna be a text view. So essentially a text view, as you can see here, allows us to have a scroll view of a lot of text. So if we have a lot of text that we want to display to the user, we use text view. You click on it and gives you what it text view is displays a region that can be that can contain multiple lines of editable text. Of course, we won't we are not going to be editing anything, but we are using this text view. Okay, so drag and drop. Right about there. Let's uh, make this a little bit. That's perfect there. And you can see right away, uh, it gives us this uh, gibberish here, Laura Ipsum, you know, gives a placeholder text so we can see how things would look. So let's save this and run one more time. So click on that. As you can see, it's running. And look at that. And let's make this a little bit smaller. That way we can see that the scroll effect that I'm talking about here. So let's run one more time. You see, there it is. We have our second screen looking decent here. I'm gonna adjust a few things here. So now that we have our user interface working, we need to start putting together the code. If we look at our project files, you can see Baroque and we have all these files. Notice that we have this view controller Swift here. We spoke about this before that each screen has its own view controller. So you have the screen with all of the user interface, then you have to have the view controller class that controls that view. Now that we have our second view controller here to the right, as you can see, we need to create another class which will control everything inside of this controller, of this view here. What we need to do, if you look at the bottom here, bottom left, there's this plus add new file sign there. Just click on that and we go say file. And once we say file, we need the Swift file. Say next and we need to name this second view controller. Make sure it's all inside of the Baroque app. Say create. And right away, we'll see we have our second view controller that Swift file with all of this, with this information here. So what do we need to do? Just go ahead, let's go back to our view controller and copy all of this, right, the code, and go back to our second view controller and paste. And we have an error here because we copied and paste, so we need to change the actual name of the class to match what we have named the file. So it's gonna be second, view controller. There we go. So this second view controller here will control this second view here. Now that we have the view controller, the second view controller Swift file, the code, now we need to connect the file, the code to our view controller. So what do you do here? Make sure you click on, let's click on our second view controller here. So click on second view controller and at the top here, click on this yellow icon, which says second view controller. So click on that. And here in our inspector, in our identity inspector here, right? Make sure you have that check. Click on the class, click on this drop down here and find where it says second view controller because this is the class which will be identified with our view controller. As you can see here, it says second view controller Swift. It's going to be obviously controlling our second view. So let's go ahead and run one once again. All right, so we have it back. You can see it takes us to the second view controller. No problem. So nothing really has changed much at all here, except we we have now made sure that our second view controller is indeed connected to the second view controller that's Swift. Okay, so now that we have that, let's close this there, get more space. Now that we have that set up, we, the next thing we need to do is to create a class which will represent a musician. The idea here is that each time, as you can see here to the left, we have our main menu, right? Our first screen says Bach, Handel, and Vivaldi. So each one of these represents a musician, which means each one of these is a noun. So Bach is a noun, Handel, Vivaldi, there's all names, there are nouns. And if you look previously when we talked about classes, we said we can represent 
anything that is a noun into a class. That way we have a better way of representing our data in our application. In this case, we can actually use what we've learned and create a class, rather generic class called musician, which will have all of the properties and functions to make up a musician entity. And then create a class called musician. So we click inside of our Baroque there. And at the bottom here, you'll see there's this plus sign. So you click on that plus sign, it says file. And this opens up here. Make sure we are under source, iOS, and we want a Swift file. So click on Swift file, say next. And we are going to name this musician. You notice also the naming here, it's all uppercase. So the first classes always have to have uppercase. And almost always our classes, since they represent just one entity, they usually have one word. So in this case, we have musician. Go ahead and say create. And you see here, let's put it up there. You see here we have our musician that's Swift. So Xcode went ahead and, and generated all of this code for us. So we're importing foundation, which is one of the libraries needed for iOS development. Next thing we need to do here, we're going to right away start putting together our musician class. Now let's think a little bit here. When we call a musician, so musician must have what? Musician is a person. So a person will have a name and, you know, a person could have an age, could have where they're from. So a country of birth. So that is what we're trying to represent abstractly as a class, which will can then create objects, which consequently will make up our application. And there it is. And we're going to call this musician properties and methods. First property here is going to be our properties. First one is going to be name. So say private var name. It's going to be a type of string. And then we're going to keep going private var bio. This is going to be just also a string. Let's go private var country, also a string, private var years. In this case, we are going to use a string. Could very well be a number, but in this case, we're just going to use it a string. And the reason why we, we have this red warning here is because we need to have an initializer for our class. So here we're going to go ahead and create one. So init, it's a method. So we're going to pass in name. It's going to be of type string bio going to be also of type string country type string year of type string okay our brace is there and we're going to go ahead and start setting things up so we're going to go to self so the self here we're referring to this class here the musician class so we are now ready to access the internal properties so in this case name bio country and year so self dot name in this case we're going to set it to name whatever we are passing in our initializer here okay so self dot bio can be a bio again self dot country country and self dot year it's going to be year so nothing too fancy here we are initializing our values here and now we need methods here. Let's go and create this method call func get name. It will return a string. So all we need to do is just say return name. Which name? Well, this name up here. We can do the same for others. So we're going to say func get bio. It's going to be returning a string space there and going to return bio get country okay returns a string return country and let's go get years it's a string Type, so we return a string, which in this case is going to be a year. Perfect. Let's give it a little bit of uh, space there. That's great. So one, two, three, four. We have our properties here. So name, by, country, year, and we have our initializer. 
right? So we're initializing all the values as we create those objects. And then we have our getters here. And here, these methods here, we have get name, get bio, get country, and get year. So we're going to use this as an entity of a musician to populate our views in our application. So save this and we are going to use this musician class here at a later time. Okay, now let's go back to our view controller here, which is our main storyboard here. So our, our, our main menu here. So let's go back to that one, the actual code. Now we need to do is to figure out a way to get data from this view controller into our second view controller. Because if you remember correctly, the idea is to you click any button here, it will take you to the second view controller, so the second screen here which we are able to accomplish because we are using the navigation controller here because we set that up. But now we have to figure out a way to actually send data from our back, for instance, to our second view controller or handle to second view controller or Vivaldi and so forth. So we need to figure out a way to be able to transport, send data between one from one view to, to another. So what do we need to do here? So let's go to our view controller, first view controller here. What do we need to do here? Let's go ahead just to test things out. We are going to use a an overridden function called prepare for segue and say override and say prepared, start typing prepared for segue. You see there's a method there, the second one. So click on that. This is a great opportunity to reiterate what we've been talking about classes and objects. You remember when we talk about classes, we talked about this override here. So now you know what override means. Now you can see we have this prepare for segue, which takes in a segue. So segue, just think of it as a bridge that takes you from A to B, in this case, from, uh, from screen A to screen B. Pass in an actual storyboard segue think of that bridge and also in a center object. We always need this anytime we want to send items from view one to view two. So for now, what we can do here, we're going to go ahead and just create a variable or var, we're going to call musician name of type string. And what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and say if segue dot identifier, because now we can actually go ahead and find identifiers for our segues. Because remember, if we go back to our main storyboard here, if you click on this segue here, this is our segue, and let's open here, we can go and find an identifier. As you can see, storyboard segue, identifier, box, seg. Okay, so each one has a different identifier. That way we can actually distinguish which one is being clicked. We have Vivaldi, let's change to Vivaldi seg, just to be, uh, consistent, handle seg, and box seg. Um, let's change this back to lowercase, just to be consistent again. So all lowercase, the first letter and anything else uppercase. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have our segues identifiers name. So what are we doing here? We're just looking for the identifier for each segue. So segue that identifier. So we're saying if segue identifier is equal to Bach seg, this way we'll know that the user has clicked on Bach segue, which means we are talking about Bach. In this case, let's just do something simple. Let's say musician name is equal to Bach just like that. This is just a little test. Let's save. Let's stop there. So all of this is happening inside of our prepared for segue function, which is the function that will allow us to transport or take things from our current state, our current view or screen to the next one. We also need a way to get the destination segue. So our destination segue is our second view controller. If you go back here, this is our destination second view controller here. Now to do that, we need to do this following. So open parenthesis, type in seg, segue dot destination view controller, right? And we're going to say as, so we are casting here as second view controller. And then we say dot data is equal to musician name. 
we're going to have an error here because we actually have to create this data variable in our second view controller. So let's go to our second view controller here. And what we can do outside here, we're going to go ahead and say var data of type string. Let's just give an empty right now. So this data here, we are okay. So let's go ahead and give it an empty string. That way we don't have that error. Perfect. Again, so what are we doing here? We're doing what's called casting. We haven't talked about casting at all yet, but we will talk more about it. So what we're saying here, we're just saying, okay, we want a way to reference our second view controller in our first view controller, which is this view controller here. And so this is what we do. We just say segue that destination view controller as the second view controller, and we accessing the data variable, which if you go back here, we created just now, right? And set it to the musician name that we are getting here. So if the identifier is box segue, if they click on Bach button, then the musician name has to be Bach, which is exactly what's going to be sent to our second view controller as the musician name. All right. So now we can retrieve here in our second view controller, what we can do for now, let's get rid of this and here say print data we should see Bach displaying. So let's save this and run. All right, so let's see if we click on handle, nothing should happen because we only looked at Bach. So let's go Bach. You can see here it says Bach, which is exactly what we sent because we click on the Bach segue. Just to prove to you that this is actually working, let's go and say else if, in this case, segue dot identifier is equal, let's say to I think Vivaldi seg, then of course, we want our musician name to be equal Vivaldi. Else, we know then uh, our musician name has to be equal to handle. Perfect. So now we have all of our cases set up. Let's save this and run one more time. All right, so let's say Bach. As you can see, it says Bach here at the bottom. Let's go back. Handle, it says handle at the bottom. Vivaldi, and it says Vivaldi. Perfect, so it is indeed working. Now, what if we actually wanna change the name label here in our screen? Well, simply we can do that. For us to be able to do that, we have to connect our items here, our name, country, year, and anything else in our view here to our code, right? So what do we need to do? We're gonna go ahead and uh, open up, click on our second view controller. Let's open up the actual code here. Okay, so there it is. And now we can just click on name, control, drag right about there. Okay, we're going to call this name label. So connect, there it is. You can see right away if you hover over, there is our connection. And let's do the same with country. So control, let go. This is going to be country, country label. Connect. This is a little bit smaller. Let's close that one down. Okay, let's go keep going. So country, I mean year, year label, and connect. And let's go ahead also because we're going to be dynamically changing this image here. Let's go and connect that as well. Image view, so artist image view. There we go. We have it all now. Now that we have a handle for all of our labels and image views, now we can directly change our label dynamically, right? Because we are now getting our data, which is the name of our musician. So now we can just go straight and change our label. So we can go ahead and say name label dot text is equal to data. Okay, we can now get rid of this. Save. Let's go ahead and run say Bach and says Bach. Go back to handle, say handle. Oh, wow. Nice. Vivaldi and so forth. So it is working. We did a lot of things in this video. 
we will stop here and we'll proceed in the next video where we are going to continue with putting together this amazing application here. So I'll see you in the next video.